peace and blessings. Thank you for joining Tribe Bukurim on this daily prayer and Bible reading journey. We will read through the Bible using the one-year Bible reading plan and end in prayer. Today is May 18th, and we will be reading from 1 Samuel chapter 22 verses 1 through 23 and chapter 23 verses 1 through 29. John chapter 10 verses 1 through 21. Psalm chapter 115 verses 1 through 18 and Proverbs chapter 15 verses 18 through 19. Let's begin. 1 Samuel chapter 22 verses 1 through 23. David pleased to Adullam and Mizpeh. David therefore departed there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. When his brothers and all his father's house heard it, they went down there to him. Everyone who was in distress and everyone who was in debt and everyone who was discontented gathered themselves to him, and he became captain over them. And there were with him about four hundred men. David went there to Mizpah of Moab, and he said to the king of Moab, Please, let my father and my mother come out with you until I know what God will do for me. He brought them before the king of Moab, and they lived with him all the while that David was in the stronghold. The prophet Gad said to David, Don't stay in the stronghold. Depart and go into the land of Judah. Then David departed and came into the forest of Hereth. Saul slays the priests of Nob. Saul heard that David was discovered and the men who were with him. Now Saul was sitting in Gibeah, under the tamarisk tree in Ramah, with his spear in his hand, and all his servants were standing about him. Saul said to his servants who stood about him, Hear now, you Benjamites! Will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards? Will he make you all captains of thousands and captains of hundreds, that all of you have conspired against me? And there is none who discloses to me when my son makes a treaty with the son of Jesse? And there is none of you who is sorry for me, or discloses to me that my son has stirred up my servant against me, to lie in wait, as at this day? Then Doeg the Edomite, who stood by the servants of Saul, answered and said, I saw the son of Jesse coming to Nob, to Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub. He inquired of Yahweh for him, gave him food, and gave him the sword of Goliath the Philistine. Then the king sent to call Ahimelech the priest, the son of Ahitub, and all his father's house, the priests who were in Nob. And they came, all of them, to the king. Saul said, Hear now, you son of a Ahitub, he answered. Here I am, my lord. Saul said to him, Why have you conspired against me, you and the son of Jesse, in that you have given him bread and a sword, and have inquired of God for him, that he should rise against me to lie in wait, as at this day? Then Ahimelech answered the king and said, Who among all your servants is so faithful as David, who is the king's son-in-law, and is taken into your counsel? and is honorable in your house. Have I today begun to inquire of God for him? Be it far from me. Don't let the king impute anything to his servant, nor to all the house of my father, for your servant knows nothing of all this, less or more. The king said, You shall surely die, Ahimelech, you and all your father's house. The king said to the guard who stood about him, Turn and kill the priests of Yahweh, because their hand also is with David, and because they knew that he fled and didn't disclose it to me. But the servants of the king wouldn't put forth their hand to fall on the priests of Yahweh. The king said to Doeg, Turn and attack the priests. Doeg the Edomite turned, and he attacked the priests, and he killed on that day eighty-five people who wore a linen ephod. He struck Nob, the city of the priests, with the edge of the sword, both men and women, children and nursing babies, and cattle, and donkeys, and sheep, with the edge of the sword. One of the sons of Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, named Abiathar, escaped and fled after David. Abiathar told David that Saul had slain Yahweh's priests. David said to Abiathar, I knew on that day, when Doeg the Edomite was there, that he would surely tell Saul, I am responsible for the death of all the persons of your father's house. Stay with me, don't be afraid. For he who seeks my life seeks your life, for with me you shall be in safeguard. 
1 Samuel chapter 23 verses 1 through 29. David delivers Keilah. David was told, Behold, the Philistines are fighting against Keilah and are robbing the threshing floors. Therefore David inquired of Yahweh, saying, Shall I go and strike these Philistines? Yahweh said to David, Go, strike the Philistines, and save Keilah. David's men said to him, Behold, we are afraid here in Judah. How much more then if we go to Keilah against the armies of the Philistines? Then David inquired of Yahweh yet again. Yahweh answered him and said, Arise, go down to Keilah, for I will deliver the Philistines into your hand. David and his men went to Keilah and fought with the Philistines and brought away their livestock and killed them with a great slaughter. So David saved the inhabitants of Keilah. It happened when Abiathar, the son of Ahimelech, fled to David to Keilah, that he came down with an ephod in his hand. Saul pursues David. It was told Saul that David had come to Keilah Saul said, God has delivered him into my hand, for he is shut in by entering into a town that has gates and bars. Saul summoned all the people to war, to go down to Keilah, to besiege David and his men. David knew that Saul was devising mischief against him, and he said to Abiathar the priest, Bring the ephod here. Then David said, O Yahweh, the God of Israel, your servant has surely heard that Saul seeks to come to Keilah to destroy the city for my sake. Will the men of Keilah deliver me up into his hand? Will Saul come down as your servant has heard? Yahweh, the God of Israel, I beg you, tell your servant. Yahweh said, He will come down. Then David said, Will the men of Keilah deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? Yahweh said, They will deliver you up. Then David and his men, who were about six hundred, arose and departed out of Keilah, and went wherever they could go. It was told Saul that David was escaped from Keilah, and he gave up going there. David stayed in the wilderness, in the strongholds, and remained in the hill country, in the wilderness of Ziph. Saul sought him every day, but God didn't deliver him into his hand. David saw that Saul had come out to seek his life, David was in the wilderness of Ziph, in the wood. Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David in the woods and strengthened his hand in God. He said to him, Don't be afraid, for the hand of Saul my father shall not find you, and you shall be king over Israel, and I shall be next to you, and that also Saul my father knows. They both made a covenant before Yahweh, and David stayed in the woods, and Jonathan went to his house. Then the Ziphites came up to Saul to Gibeah, saying, Doesn't David hide himself with us in the strongholds in the wood, in the hill of Hekilah, which is on the south of the desert? Now therefore, O king, come down, according to all the desire of your soul to come down, and our part shall be to deliver him up into the king's hand. Saul said, You are blessed by Yahweh, for you have had compassion on me. Please go, make yet more sure and know and see his place where his haunt is, and who has seen him there. For it is told me that he deals very subtly. See therefore, and take knowledge of all the lurking places where he hides himself, and come again to me with certainty, and I will go with you. And it shall happen, if he is in the land, that I will search him out among all the thousands of Judah. They arose and went to Ziph before Saul. But David and his men were in the wilderness of Maon, in the Arabah, on the south of the desert. Saul and his men went to seek him. When David was told, he went down to the rock and stayed in the wilderness of Maon. When Saul heard that, he pursued after David in the wilderness of Maon. Saul went on this side of the mountain, and David and his men on that side of the mountain. And David made haste to get away for fear of Saul. For Saul and his men surrounded David and his men to take them. But a messenger came to Saul, saying, Hurry and come! for the Philistines have made a raid on the land. So Saul returned from pursuing after David and went against the Philistines. Therefore they called that place Selah Hamalakoth. David went up from there 
and lived in the strongholds of En Gedi. John chapter 10 verses 1 through 21 Most certainly I tell you, one who doesn't enter by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, is a thief and a robber. But one who enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Whenever he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. They will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they don't know the voice of strangers. Jesus spoke this parable to them, but they didn't understand what he was telling them. Jesus, therefore, said to them again, Most certainly, I tell you, I am the sheep's door. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters in by me, he will be saved, and will go in and go out, and will find pasture. The thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life, and may have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who doesn't own the sheep, sees the wolf coming, leaves the sheep, and flees. The wolf snatches the sheep and scatters them. The hired hand flees because he is a hired hand and doesn't care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and I'm known by my own. Even as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will hear my voice. They will become one flock with one shepherd. Therefore the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. No one takes it away from me, but I lay it down by myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. I received this commandment from my Father. Therefore a division arose again among the Jews because of these words. Many of them said, He has a demon and is insane. Why do you listen to him? Others said, These are not the sayings of one possessed by a demon. It is impossible for a demon to open the eyes of the blind, is it? Psalm chapter 115 verses 1 through 18 Not to us, Yahweh, not to us. But to your name give glory, for your loving kindness and for your truth's sake. Why should the nations say, Where is their God now? But our God is in the heavens. He does whatever he pleases. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they don't speak. They have eyes, but they don't see. They have ears, but they don't hear. They have noses, but they don't smell. They have hands, but they don't feel. They have feet, but they don't walk. Neither do they speak through their throat. Those who make them will be like them. Yes, everyone who trusts in them. Israel, trust in Yahweh. He is their help and their shield. House of Aaron, trust in Yahweh. He is their help and their shield. You who fear Yahweh, trust in Yahweh. He is their help and their shield. Yahweh remembers us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear Yahweh, both small and great. May Yahweh increase you more and more, you and your children. Blessed are you by Yahweh, who made heaven and earth. The heavens are the heavens of Yahweh, but the earth has he given to the children of men. The dead don't praise Yah, neither any who go down into silence. But we will bless Yah from this time forward and forevermore. Praise Yah! Proverbs chapter 15 verses 18 through 19 A wrathful man stirs up contention but one who is slow to anger appeases strife. The way of the sluggard is like a thorn patch, but the path of the upright is a highway.
Lord, we thank you for being our provider. You hide us under the shadow of your wings when we need protection. You supernaturally provide for us and bless us with your divine favor. No one can love like you. No one can provide like you. No one can heal like you. No one can save like you. Thank you for giving us the gift of being the apple of your eye. All glory belongs to you, our God and King. We recognize you in your power and ask your forgiveness for anything we have said, done, or thought that was unpleasing to you. Create in us clean hearts and renew right spirits within us. Bless us with knowledge, wisdom, understanding, maturity, discernment, and focused minds. Take away any thoughts or feelings that are not in alignment with you. Open our eyes to the wonderful things of your law and make it an engrafted word in us. May we live lives according to your will, denounce our sinful nature, lay our sins at your feet and walk in obedience to you for your glory. Father, we desire to be pleasing in your sight and ask that you bless us with keen eyes and ears that we may always recognize false doctrines. May we always remember to be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to become angry. Make us to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves that we may walk in wisdom for your glory. We present our bodies as living sacrifices to you and ask that you make us aware of your presence and what you are doing in the earth today. Cover us with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Keep our physical bodies, our nation, homes, modes of transportation, places of employment, bank accounts, credit and investments and communities safe from all hurt, harm and danger. Expose and obliterate anything that dares to come against your people. Bring complete and total healing to our minds, emotions, and bodies. May your perfect will be done in the earth. We pray this prayer over ourselves and everyone connected to us in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. May the shalom peace of God follow you for the rest of your days.